Well, I've just spent all morning on the phone to all these different organisations. I have been seeking legal advice this morning and I've followed that advice to the letter. I have recorded and I've made the people aware that I've been recording them and they've accepted that. They're recording me, so why I, you know, I've got the right to record them. I have recorded all the conversations I've made, including the one to my solicitor. Halfway through the conversation, he asked me to record it. So, um, basically... So that's, uh, you know, obviously my complaint against her. So in case people don't believe I'm running through this, I'm running through this. And that's uh, just a snipping uh, that's actually playing in the background. I can't, I can't, you know, it's just running. I just, it is what it is. I've now made a formal complaint against the person who has written the statement. I've now given them details and evidence, uh, a minimal amount of evidence over the phone to prove that what's been said is lies. I've given them addresses of my CPN uh, and my mental health team, so they now can contact them direct and inquire direct if they wish to do so. Uh, I am in possession of a letter that I've already received stating that uh, under no, I've never been sectioned, I've never been in any mental health institution or anything like that, or I'm under the care of a mental health team, but I've never been committed to any mental health thing. All, a lot of the things that's been put on that statement are lies. I've now proven, and I've even mentioned to them, and proved on the phone call to her, and the video, because I've videoed it as well. I've not only recorded it on another phone, but I actually have videoed it on a laptop, bless her. So that's all been videoed. <coughs> They're in possession of everything now, including my complaint. I've formally requested transcripts of all the conversations that I've made to them, and every other organisation, but mainly them, to this conversation, we'll cover this, that I have made to them going back to June the 14th of last year. And they're going to track every call that I've made. And every call, and it was a call from the police that was sent to them last year with, with a concern that they never got back to me with within a certain time frame, which is, you know, which is against the law on their behalf. Um, so that's going to be looked into. I've also requested under the Freedom of Information Act any information that they hold on me, going back to the age of me being four years old, under all the different names that I've been under, under my parents' names, both my parents, or all my parents, if you like, I've requested all that information from them, and I'm waiting for that. They've told me that it's going to be a minimum of 20 days. All hard copies. When I'm in receipt of all them hard copies, and my solicitor is in receipt of those copies, we are then going to request all the copies and transcripts of everything that's been said to me in conversation to that said person who's made that, made that statement. We're going to ask for all the transcripts of the phone calls and evidence that she's acted on and that she's put on that paperwork, i.e. what other parties have said to her. So then when we go to court, that party can't say, well, I never said that because we will have the evidence in front of us. We will have it. So that's that one. So that's them dealt with. My solicitor now is going to get the ball rolling, but this is going to, this is going to take a few months to talk. To, all this is going to take a few months to sort out. It's a minimum of 20 days before I'm going to get any of the paperwork come back. No doubt they'll, no doubt they'll hold it back. I did mention, again, it's all on tape and video. Everything I've mentioned is on there. An incident that happened in 2010 that's been noted. That they, um, she's looked on the system and it's not on the system, which is very bizarre. And when we tried to access that, that system at the time a meeting was had, they couldn't find any acknowledgement of that meeting even existed, even though my doctor attended that meeting, which is very bizarre. Apparently that come to light at the beginning of this year, but according to this woman, and I have video the call, I've accessed, you know, recorded what she said to me, and she's openly got the screen in front of her, and it's not even on that screen, and yet that's been used in court. That's been used against me in court. And it's, just, it's just very, you know, so that's been done. She's also been told that she's not to make any contact with me. Nobody's allowed to make any contact with me from their department unless it's in a hard copy. My new number is confidential and not to be shared with any other organisation, etc, etc, etc. So that's that. I am in possession of a letter from my CPN stating that I have never been sectioned or anything like that and that I have been working with the mental health team. I have now been in touch with them again this morning and under the Freedom of Information Act, I have now requested all my medical documents 
and from my psychiatrist, all the transcripts and notes taken from all my counselling sessions, over 60 sessions, transcripts of every single one, what's been said in them interviews. Everything I've said to her, I'm having transcripts of. So everything I've said over the last, till 2009, concerning my PTSD and my mental health that's locked down, I am going to have that in writing. Medical records, I've also requested all my medical records. Or I'm accessing all my medical records under the Freedom of Information Act, going back, to, again, to the age that I was four years old. Or I don't know why I've been asked to take it back to four years old. I don't know why my solicitor's asked me to take it that far back, but it's going back till I was four. Because I'm sure there's going to, you must think there's incidents. I know there was an incident. I know there's incidents occurred. So that's that one. So then what we're going to do is we're having this back in court. We can have this back in court. And the reason we're having back in court, there's several reasons. One is, made no contact with me at the court. Made no contact with me. I received no letters from the court, apart from after the court dating. I think it was a week or two weeks after, stating what the court what was said in court, which I'm very disturbed about. So that's the first thing. This statement, what's been made, was signed off on the 9th of March. I didn't receive it till the end of April. That's been deliberately withheld. But um, we're looking into why that is and if the other parties have received their statements and when they've sent them statements out to them. Now, emails have been sent to my address, my email address. That's been looked into somebody who's computer wizard and looked into all my emails and all the rest of it, junk boxes and everything. There's no emails been sent to them. We've also asked them today for confirmation of when they've sent this email and proof that they've sent it. We're not going to get that because they're going to say we've gone to the wrong department and all the rest of it. They're going to tell lies. But it's funny how, with me, everything seems to have gone tits up. They've not sent this, they've not sent that. I've not received any paperwork until the end of April when it was initially supposed to be dated for the 1st of April. That was the first court hearing. I didn't get anything until nearly four weeks after. So I believed, I, I believe that she may, may, I'm using this word, have withheld the information to me so that I couldn't defend myself in court, but now I can. Because it's been to court, everything that's been said in court has now been put on papers and logged. All the courts are in receipt of all the information. That's all now been stamped off. I am now going, guns out, to correct all the lies that's been said in court. Correct all the slanderous allegations that have been made against me, etc, etc. I have received no papers with regards to any of the information over the last 12 months, even though I have got, I've got parental responsibilities and all the rest of it. I'm not going to discuss the case. I'm not going to discuss the names. I'm quite legal what I'm doing. I will be proving that these people have told lies. When I've done that and it's been stamped off in the court, I will be taking civil action against you for the alarm and distress that you've caused me over the last 12 months. And that includes family members as well. I will be seeking legal advice to put you in civil court for the alarm and distress that you've caused with the statements that you've made and the mention of this, the mention of that and all the rest of it. So that's the end of it. God bless you all. This is going to be an unrolling thing. It's going to take months. I'm going to update you, but I'm not going to put anything else on this channel. It's all going to be on the other channel. So if you want to know what's going on, you need to jump over to the other channel. God bless you all. I'll speak soon.